Hello guys, welcome back. So today's video is a little bit different. After the last two videos that I posted, the one that I just posted was the time that I bombed my test shoot for a TV show. And then before that was about my experience acting on the show, This Is Us. And when I posted that video, I expected a lot of questions from fans of the show that wanted to know like what it was like being on that set, working with those actors. Like I thought people would be more curious about the show specifically but i got like an overwhelming amount of people asking me what it was like being in the acting industry in general and how i got started and unfortunately there's a lot of people who have always dreamt of pursuing a career in acting and never did because a they didn't know how to get started or b they were too scared, which completely understand. It's, it's, it's scary. So I thought I would make a video here today answering just about any question that you could possibly have about coming to LA and pursuing a career in this industry. I feel like I've said this before in the video that I made about crying on cue, but back when I was moving out to LA, I was already a big fan of YouTube and I did a lot. I tried to do as much research as I could about what it was like not being an actor. When you Google what's it like being an actor, you get all these like celebrities. I wanted to know what it was like being a struggling actor and I couldn't really get like any honest, raw experiences from people that were out here doing it. So maybe I, if you're thinking about doing this, then maybe this will help you or give you some insight as to what the f you're in for. I've been living in LA for 12 years. Oh my God, it's about to be 13. I would say the first three to four years was me just like figuring out how to adult. And then the next couple years after that was me sort of getting my groove in the acting industry and finding my rhythm, a solid team and a solid foundation. But I wouldn't say that I have seriously really been working as an actor until about five years ago. Now, this is what I'm talking about, is I feel like I could have cut a lot of time out of that if I had something like this to better prepare me. So that's kind of my goal today. If you're thinking about pursuing this, then maybe I can help you, give you some shortcuts so that you have a better game plan than I did. A lot of the past like seven years of my life has been bartending at night to keep my days open for auditions, so that's important. So I will bartend at night, go to bed at like four to 5 a.m. sometimes, and then wake up in the morning, go to my auditions, and a lot of times I would end up going straight back to another bartending shift. Like I didn't sleep for years. It's rough, <laughs> it's rough. Now let me make this part very, very clear. I am not making this video to show you how to be a successful actor. I'm still working on that. And unfortunately that part is entirely up to you. I can help you know like more what to expect. Maybe you can apply my experiences to your own and cut a lot of the bullshit out that I had to learn from experience. But yeah, I am not even a full-time actor, but I have been. There was definitely a time when I was working so much and so back to back to back that I thought that I was done working in the service industry and I quit my job and you know, but that's what happens. And the whole thing is a big learning experience and we'll, we'll get into all of that. So if you are thinking about relocating your entire life to come to LA to pursue a career in this industry, watch this video first. Also, as I go through the um, different like bullet points that I have, I have my laptop over here. If I have any personal experiences of my own that relate to that, to just to give you a more like tangible experience, I'll be sharing those too. So I'm gonna make this part really, really quick. Just some background for me personally. I grew up dancing, like ballet, tap, jazz, all that stuff for 14 years. And then as soon as I hit high school, I saw my first musical. And I was like, uh, that's right up my alley. So then my sophomore year, I auditioned for the musical and I got the lead. It was Footloose, it was so fun. One of the best um, memories like of being on stage in my life. From being in that musical, I decided to take theater classes in um, my high school. And from there, they were casting these like one act shows, which is basically like a 20 minute play. So I auditioned and the one that they cast me in was for a little one act show called Go Ask Alice. And I booked the role of Alice. So that was big for me. I had no idea how serious this role was, but like, if you guys have ever heard of Go Ask Alice, it's like a famous book. Alice goes through abuse and then falls through depression, turns to drugs, and in the end, she overdoses on sleeping pills and dies. I had to do all of that on stage and it was my first time acting in front of anybody, but it was the best time in my life. 
and I didn't know that I was capable of doing any of the things that I did. So that was a big eye opener for me. I was like, wow, I, this is really, I wanna do this, like seriously. So from there is where I joined the drama club and I became a lot more involved and did a lot of main stage productions. After high school, I immediately booked a role in um, an independent film. They were casting locally in Arizona. They were casting for two different feature films. They were in the same building on the same day. They weren't related though, it was really weird. And I auditioned for both of them while I was there and I booked the lead in both of them. One movie ended up never being made and the other one I filmed. I remember being in the audition room and he was like, are you 18? And I was like, I will be tomorrow. Like I was a little baby and he knew how green I was. So when he took me on, he really like showed me the ropes. I learned so, so much. You can learn a shit ton being in acting classes, but it does not compare no matter what to being on an actual set. I knew that once I moved out to LA, I wasn't going to be able to take acting classes right away because they're very expensive. I gave myself two months in Arizona before I made the move out here to take as many acting classes as I could. And then I moved out here with nothing. It took me a while to get my footing, but then as of like five years ago, it was when I really started like auditioning and it's been nonstop pretty much since then. Okay, so tip number one, money. What I'm gonna tell you is obviously obvious. Save up as much as you can. I didn't. I'm actually really surprised. I think about this all the time that my parents even let me move out here. I was, I barely turned 18 and I had $600 to my name. My rent out here was $600. So I had nothing. I'm just like shocked that they even let me do that. How scary. I was such a little baby. I was a baby. If money is an issue for you, like it is for a lot of us, I strongly recommend getting roommates. Even if it's like a two bedroom apartment and you just get one roommate, splitting the cost of a two bedroom with someone is still cheaper than if you were to get a one bedroom by yourself. And a lot of times a studio even. I moved into a four bedroom condo with five people because one of the bedrooms had a couple. And it was a lot of us, but like it was a condo and it was pretty large. And I had my own room to myself. I had to share a bathroom and obviously like the kitchen and the living room, but like it wasn't bad at all. And my rent was only $600. So that helps a lot. If you, if I had moved out here to live by myself, I would have easily been paying like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 for a studio. So I definitely recommend getting roommates. It will help so much. Also, if money is like really, really an issue, I know there are housing projects out here for um, like artists. I worked with several people who lived in these like huge houses in downtown LA, these mansions, and there would be like 25 people in one house. That's a lot of people sharing like the kitchen and like the common areas obviously, but I think everyone shared a bedroom with one person. Obviously that's not ideal, but these people were paying like two to $300 in rent a month. So like it's, it's doable, you know, if you really needed that, it's there, it's an option. Number two is focus. Here's a really, really great motto. Understand the difference between networking and clout chasing. I know, so crazy. There is a difference, so weird. It's really hard not to get distracted by shiny objects. And like my first couple years out living in LA, just from like the people that I've met through my roommates and other um, friends that I made over time, I somehow kind of ended up in this group that was like, <laughs> there were some famous people in the group and there were so, so, so many of us like me who kind of taught me that being friends with these people being friends and being close with these famous people is what will open doors for you and to me at the time that made a lot of sense like obviously it's about who you know right so if you're friends with these famous people these successful people they could introduce you to x y and z that is true obviously but a lot of those same clout chasers are still chasing clout to this day it just ended up being a group of people that were all looking for the same thing, which was status. All that did was lead to competition and fake friendships. And I learned that pretty quickly and I got the fuck out of there. These people that I, I'm telling you are still doing this shit to this day and they are nowhere in their acting career, but this is what they think matters. Being on Instagram next to these famous people and that to them is what gives them value and that's not right. Sometimes it is about who you know, but if that's where you find your value, it's not gonna matter. Work hard, that's what shows. And that brings me to number three, which is networking. 
This is so tricky. This is what's hard is you want to open as many doors as possible, right? So if you go to a networking event, like a party, right? A Hollywood party, like you want to make friends with other actors with producers, with other people that are in the industry because you want to shake as many hands as you can. However, you have to be really careful in those scenarios because unfortunately there are a lot of disgusting people out here that aren't trying to offer you an opportunity without you paying for it somehow. So when I first moved out here, it took me a couple years, but eventually I did meet someone, I think through Facebook that was like, hey, if you're looking for a manager, um, I have a friend who manages talent and I think he needs an Asian person on his roster. So I went to the building to go meet with this manager. As I was leaving, this man saw me in the hallway and was like, oh, like, what are you here for? And I said, oh, I had a meeting with somebody who could potentially be my manager. And he was like, oh, um, well, I am an agent over at this modeling agency across the hall and we could really use your look. Like, would you, do you want to meet with me right now? And I was like, uh, yeah. And to me, obviously that feels like you hit the jackpot because it's so hard to find good reps here and you never know where to start. How do you even find an agent, right? So like that to me, I was like, oh my God, two different agents in one day. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I went over to his office and I met with him. All he ended up doing was telling me that he couldn't sign me unless I lost weight but that didn't stop him from inviting me to a lot of Hollywood parties. I was really naive. I was still smart enough not to go anywhere by myself or I was still very, very safe, but it was a waste of time. It wasn't dangerous. The first Hollywood party that he invited me to, I went with a friend because I didn't want to go by myself, obviously. And this friend had been living in, out in LA in the fashion world for a couple years already. So like I trusted going with her. I felt like it would be safe. We ended up at this like beautiful, huge, huge mansion in the Hollywood Hills. And we walked in and it was like 90% men. It took us a couple minutes to find my modeling agent who wasn't really my agent because he wouldn't sign me unless I lost weight, whatever. Once he found us, he kind of like pulled me away to go meet with his people. And my friend ended up making conversations. She's very sociable. So she was like, you know, walking around and making her own connections too. And I was gone for maybe a couple minutes, but I kind of, I immediately got the vibe. Well, first of all, I was kind of uncomfortable. I kind of just felt like a piece of meat. Like everyone was just kind of staring at me and there were like no females there. It was really weird. I ended up turning back to go find my friend. And when I came back, she was not there anymore. At first I kind of panicked, but eventually I looked out on the patio and I saw her sitting on the patio on a bench and she was sandwiched between two men who were talking to her at the same time. And and the moment she saw me, her eyes really lit up and I knew it was time to go. Like she can handle herself, like I said. And if she felt uncomfortable and scared, it was time to go. But it just kind of opened my eyes as to like, if this is what networking is, then I'm okay just putting in the hard work and not networking at all because that felt really fake. And like, it kind of made me feel like I was, I had to like sell myself to these people. Another time I was invited to um, a rap party for a, film a project that I didn't have anything to do with. I wasn't in it or anything. Sometimes that happens. And that's actually a really great way to network because it's a safe space. It's not like a bougie Hollywood party. If somebody is going to a rap party and they invite you as their plus one, that really is a good opportunity to go and like meet all of the actors and just like make friends. These are people that are sort of in your space and they're going after the same thing that you are and that these are the people that I wanted to connect with. So I went to a rap party. I was also filming something, uh, a, a film at the time. They, I guess they all kind of knew each other and some of the people from my film set came to this rap party too. So I had a couple people there that I knew. And eventually, um, I don't re even remember how it happened. I don't remember. I I don't remember if I was like leaving or something, but I ended up getting kind of backed into a corner by um, my special effects guy from my set, not from theirs. And he was drunk. He was starting to get really like in my face and really like hitting on me hardcore. When I feel like you're backing me into a corner physically, I feel like you're doing that on purpose so that you can like zero in on me. I that's gross. I immediately got irritated. And to make it really, really short, I ended up getting to a point where I was so angry that I told him to like back the fuck up or something like that. This is when his face changed and his face looked genuinely angry, but 
what he said was not angry. What he leaned in and he said, you're really sexy when you're mad. I didn't even have time to say anything in response to that because the director ended up coming out and seeing what was going on. The next day that I was on set, the special effects man was fired and replaced already. So like I said, that director really took me under his wing and like looked out for me. Honestly, that, that's not even like a networking issue. That's just like, that can happen anywhere at any party, but it can especially happen when people feel like they are a, a, an opportunity for you, you know? They can introduce you to certain people, they can do this for you and do that for you. Those are the people that will do whatever they can to take advantage of the situation. If that situation had happened today, it wouldn't have come even close to what, what went down. It would, have, it would have ended two minutes in. There was, this is the last story. There was a, a time when a friend of a friend was casting for a film that he was gonna be making. And I guess he had reached out to me, hey, I would really love for you to be in this movie. Do you think we can meet up, blah, blah, blah. He wasn't a stranger. I knew who he was. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. And he said that he had a conference room at his like office and he asked me if I could come in and we could like look over the script and talk about it. So I show up and I see him in the parking lot and he's like, oh, the conference room was booked for today so we can't use it. And I was like, okay. That's okay. And he's like, do you want to just like walk over to the restaurant? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we walked over to the restaurant, we got a table and he told me nothing was weird. The whole time he talked, he told me all about his movie. Um, it was a paranormal film and it was totally fine. And I was actually on board. I liked the storyline. I liked the character. And then as we were leaving, we were just chatting really quick in the parking lot before we were going to head to our cars. And he was talking about the paranormal, you know, cause it was a scary movie. He's talking about like ghosty things. And then he like ran Randomly threw in a story about him and I was like whoa like I, I like it came out of nowhere I just kind of like shut up and let him talk and he went he just kept going and going talking about and what turns him on and I was like whoa this is getting really weird and he's like oh I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable I was like it's totally fine we talked about the movie I'm gonna go he didn't want to let me leave feeling that way <laughs> I left and guess what that movie never existed. The script wasn't even real. This is what I'm saying. I feel like these writers and producers and stuff are like, oh, I can, I have opportunities for you. It's so funny because a lot of people think that the harassment or whatever the shit that we have to deal with happens on set and it never happens on set. In fact, set for me personally, everyone has their own experiences, but for me, I have never experienced any type of harassment or inappropriate situations or anything like that ever on set. Set is usually like the most PC, the most respectful place because they're, you could sue them. I've seen arguments go down, but that happens at any workplace, you know? When you're sharing a tight space with a, a bunch of people and your job requires you to be emotional because you're an actor, people are gonna argue and that just is what it is. But I've never seen anybody like, get creepy or get gross. So my advice for networking would be this. Go to acting class. Go to acting workshops. A lot of the acting classes out here are very expensive, but there are some in like local studios, smaller studios that are affordable. If you walk into an acting class and you let everybody know, hi, I'm Sarah, I just moved here, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have any agents. I don't have a manager. I don't have anything. I don't know what I'm doing. So if you guys have anyone, I'm, I'm looking for reps right now. Guarantee you will find an agent and a manager. You don't even need both technically. If not from the other students, the teacher will be like, oh yeah, I have a friend. You will find someone. So yeah, I think going to acting classes where it's already like a safe space and you're already in a room filled with people that are chasing the same dream as you are. This is not clout chasing. This is not name dropping. Everyone in this room is here because they want to get better and they want to reach their goals. Everyone here knows about the grind. These are the people you wanna connect with. These are the people that you want to make friends with. Highly, highly recommend that that's where you make your connections. It's a great shortcut. Number four is pressure and anxiety. I know a lot about this one. I had a big issue with anxiety in the last couple of years. It's funny because when I was younger, I didn't feel it as much because I was just excited to be out here. But it wasn't until I started to get older that I really started to put the pressure 
on myself to book. Like I need to book. Like I'm about to be 30, I am 30 now, but like a couple years ago I was like, I'm gonna be 30 and I'm still on this grind. I'm still like doing this stuff. And like, when is it going to happen for me? Is it going to happen at all? Like that anxiety will get to you 100%. And it's that anxiety that completely sabotages your audition because they see that, they read it, they sense it from you. And I knew that was happening and I just couldn't control it. Like I would get so, so, so nervous before auditions, my knees would buckle, like literally. When you're so full of angst like that, how are you really supposed to even delve into the character that you're supposed to be playing? They don't even see the character. They just see a nervous girl. It ends up sabotaging you, it really does. The hard part about that is knowing that that's happening and not being able to control it. Here's something that really, really, really changed my life. Several years ago, I was in Hong Kong filming a movie and one of the executive producers also played a small role in the film and she was there with her two-year-old daughter and I was I'm just watching her like if she's not on set acting she's behind the scenes watching phone calls being a mom holding her two-year-old like and there was a day when we were just sitting at a table and I was like I don't understand how you do it like how are you wearing all these hats at once? Like, I don't, I don't get that. And she said, let me tell you something. For a long time, I believed that I needed to put everything else in my life on hold so that I could give acting 100% of myself. Don't do that. All that did was hold me back. It's so funny because she's like, the moment I allowed myself to actually live my life, I got a boyfriend and then I got married and then I got pregnant. And she said, while all of this stuff was going on was when she started acting the most. And that reminds me of, if you guys watch the Big Bang Theory, Haley Cuoco. She was doing an interview one time and she mentioned you know, how she got into acting. And she said that she told her mom that she wanted to be an actor. And her mom said, you can be an actor if you choose something else too. Like you can't just do acting, you gotta choose something else. So she chose tennis and she ended up playing tennis like competitively and won championships and shit. And she says to this day that she doesn't think she ever would have been an actor if she didn't have tennis to do on the side too. It's like when you put everything on hold just to do acting, the fear really sets in that if this doesn't work out, you have nothing else. And that is where the anxiety kicks in. And that is what ends up sabotaging you. You won't get distracted if you don't wanna be distracted. I hadn't dated in like 10 years. Like I dated like here and there, but I didn't have a boyfriend for literally 10 years. And then a couple years ago, I finally allowed myself to go on a date. He's my boyfriend now and we've been together for three years. I fell in love with him and then immediately, like last year, was my best year yet with acting. I was just booking all the time. It just took the pressure out of my auditions because I had something else to look forward to and something else to focus on and something else to be excited about and happy about. All that did was help me go in the audition and do what I'm supposed to do, which is have fun, act because I love acting. It just speaks for itself, you know what I mean? You need these life experiences to help you be a better actor. Number five is auditions. I'm gonna make this as quick as possible for those of you who want to know what the audition process is like. It all starts from your agent. They are the one that sends you your audition. If you don't have an agent, there are websites, Actors Access or LA Casting, there's a few of them. You can sign up yourself. I recommend you starting an entirely new email account for those because they will take up your entire email. If you're gonna do it yourself, basically you go in and you like fill out all their like questions, your height, your ethnicity, your hair color, your your age range. Any audition from casting directors that are sent out, it'll be sent to you, you can read it over and if it's something that you're interested in, you can submit yourself. From there, the casting director will get all the submissions, look at them all, and approve the ones that they think will be a good fit for this role. If they approve you, then they give you an appointment time. If you have an agent, your agent does all of that for you. So then you have an audition. In the email will be like the character breakdown, which is just giving you so, some insight as to what your character is like, the person that you're gonna be playing, your audition appointment time, the address, and then it will also have an attachment for the sides. Sides are your lines. 
sometimes they're dummy sides. They're written specifically for the audition just to give you some audition material. Other times they're literally pulled from the script. They just give you like a scene from the script. Those are the things that you're gonna be memorizing. Usually auditions come a couple days in advance. If you're lucky, sometimes it's a week in advance. A lot of times it's very last minute, which sucks. If it's something where they're filming on site, like they're on location somewhere and they can't come to LA to hold an audition, like if it's a last minute thing and they need to replace somebody really, really quick, a lot of times they'll have you do a self tape, which means that you film the audition at home yourself and you submit it. Those can be good because you can do the audition as many times as you want until you have like a good take to send to them. Whereas if you go in in person, you get like one try. When you go in, you take your sides with you, period. No matter how memorized you are, you take the sides with you, printed, on paper, they like to see that because it shows them that you're moldable. If you go in without sides, it can kind of imply that you're fully memorized, which is a good thing, but it can also sort of make it look like you're over rehearsed. So if they give you any notes or any adjustments, it might fuck you up. But if you have the sides in your hands, they feel like they can throw anything at you and you'll always be okay because you have the lines in your hands if you need them. Also these days, pretty much everything is digital. So you don't really need to take in a hard copy of your headshot because they already have have it, but in case they do need it, it'll say in the email if they do. An eight by 10 headshot with your resume stapled on the back. You sign in and you wait in the little waiting room with all the other actors who will probably be quietly going over their lines and whispering to themselves. This is where you can get in your Zen space and make sure that you're ready to go. When they call your name, you walk in and a lot of times they'll ask you if you have any questions about the scene. If you have any questions, this is definitely a time to ask and it should feel safe. You should feel like you're acting with your friends. So you will go in there and you'll do your read with the reader. It'll be on tape. And don't ever shake the casting director's hand. You walk in, you get on your mark, you smile, you have good energy, that's all you need. They have a hundred of you coming in that day. Do not shake their hands. They're not gonna shake it. They literally won't. Then from there, if you get a, a call back, then they'll give you an appointment time for a, another day. Go in, wear the same thing that you wore before, do exactly the same thing that you did before. It's gonna be exactly the same, except there's gonna be more people in the room, probably producers that wanted to come in and see you in person. The producers will only come in when it's been really, really narrowed down. So if you get a call back, that means that you did something right. So do exactly what you did in the first audition. And then from there, they'll decide if they want you or not. Just always be prepared for your auditions. Make sure that you're completely memorized, but make sure that you're also not too rehearsed. Keep yourself pliable. Like you could easily go in and give like a bomb ass performance and then they throw something at you later when you're done where they're like, oh, um, your character is, 14. Now you have to change your whole performance. And sometimes they'll do that, honestly, just to see if you can take direction well. It's always really frustrating for them when they're like, okay, can we do that again, but do it like this? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And then you do it and you do it exactly the way that you did it before. Like they need to make sure that you can take direction well and that you're easy to work with. Number six is so important. Don't take anything personally. Okay, repeat after me. Rejection is not a reflection of your talent. Very important. Rejection is the name of the game in this industry and it means nothing. If they need to cast one role and they have thousands of people coming in to audition for that one role, I mean, who wants rejection? It just is what it is and it means nothing. I have lost jobs due to the most insignificant reasons like my height, my ethnicity, my age. I've lost a job one time because my boobs were too big. There were two shows one year. They're on Netflix right now. It's the 100 and the originals. And I came so close. I met with all the producers for both of those shows, came so close on both of them and ultimately lost both of them for the same reason, which is that I didn't actually look 16, which is totally fine. I get it. But this is just what I'm telling you is like, all you need to focus on is your read. Make sure that your read was good. Go into the room and make fans. As long as you do that, the rest of the stuff is out of your control. And if you don't believe me, here's a story for you. One time I went to a callback and the casting assistant came out and started talking to all the girls in the waiting room, just like small chat, just really, really quick. And one of the girls mentioned that she was really nervous. And the casting, and the casting assistant was like, listen, she said one time she was casting for a film and when it came down to a specific role, they could not decide who to cast. So what did they do? They put all the headshots of the girls that they were in between on top of the table and they put a baby, an infant on the table. Whichever headshot the baby crawled to, 
is the one they cast for the movie. So please, for the love of God, don't take anything personally. All you have to worry about is getting a good performance in the room and making fans. If you got a callback, that means you did something right. That means they like you. But the reason they didn't cast you probably came down to a technical issue that was completely out of your control. So don't harp on it. Go to your audition, go home and forget about it. If they call you back, amazing. If they don't, then on to the next. And then this is my last, um, it's not even like a tip. It's just like, <sighs> be prepared to be lonely. A lot of people come out to LA for a specific reason. They come out here on a mission. They're chasing their dream and they will step on you to get there. You'll come out here and you'll meet people that are doing it the right way and people that are doing it the wrong way. And what way you want to do it is really up to you. A lot of people, I see so many like YouTube videos of people that are like, why I left LA. And then they just kind of talk about, oh, it was so superficial. Everyone is so fake. Status really matters. But it's like, every time I watch videos like that, I'm like, that's not, you're hanging out with the wrong people. Because do you know how many people come out here and they work their ass off. They don't care about status. They don't go out. I didn't party in Vegas until I was almost 28 years old. I haven't slept in like seven years. It's really hard to work a job that pays the rent and pays the bills and still be available during the day to go to your auditions, always stay available for them in case something last minute pops up, which it always does, and still find time to like eat right, take care of yourself, work out, and spend time with your friends and stay social. Like, But there are a lot of people out here on the same grind that you are that are working their asses off, and those are the people that I want to be around. And you know, there's definitely lulls where it gets really fucking depressing. There are times when it's so busy that I just can't keep up. Like what I was saying before, like I was, I went to an audition, I booked a movie. And then before I left to go film that movie, I went on another audition for a different movie. And while I was on set, my agent called me and was like, hey, you have another movie when you come back. Straight from movie to movie, to TV show, to this, to that. And it was like nonstop. And then after that, the holidays came up and like the whole industry takes a break for the holidays, obviously. So I was excited to like fly home, see my parents, see my family. I felt so, I was like, on cloud nine, I come back to LA, I'm on my grind again, I'm ready, right? And I'm going to all these auditions and it's like, I'm not booking. It's so weird, I was on such a roll before. I ended up going back to my waitressing job and asking for my job back. That was hard for me until I realized that almost everybody has done that and or is doing it. I've had friends that were on TV shows for years, like a steady position on a TV show for years. And then eventually they, they leave, however that happens. They're going to their auditions and they're doing their stuff, but they're not booking. They were just on a show for years. And I've seen those people go back to serving, go back to bartending. And usually it's not because they need the money, but more because not working is now just wasting money. When those lulls happen, it's really hard not to get discouraged. That's also why I'm saying to like have a hobby, have something else on the side. But yeah, I just wanted to say, I, I honestly wouldn't worry about fake people because there's fake people everywhere. So at the end of the day, I say, as long as you're prepared for all of that, get your armor on, you know, have that tough skin, get your fake people repellent out and you fucking work. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm all ears. I will answer them all for you. I really hope I hit everything. I had a lot of information, I know, but, um, I mean, if this is your dream, then I say go for it. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Break a leg. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.